Hello everyone, I'm Jun Tay from Singapore University of Social Sciences. Today I'm making a presentation on the use of immersive VR production as summative uh, assessment. I will start off by giving you uh, some background on this subject and also uh, discuss with you the benefits and challenges of using VR 360 as assessment. Our case study is on experiential learning trip to Hangzhou and Shanghai in July 2019. So what is the background? In early days, we have take-home assessment, including paper-based, um, you know, uh, handwritten paper essays. And then we move on to having Microsoft document, and it's actually a digital uh, document-based reports. And around um, in, the two, in the year uh, 2000 onwards, uh, we start having digital video assessment, and that's uh, video recording uh, in various formats. In recent years, uh, people do use uh, podcasts and video blogging as assessments. And last year, we have actually tried um, using learner-generated uh, VR360 for assessment. And also in recent years, uh, we see that uh, people are sharing uh, their video blogs, their podcasts, and also their digital video on internet, social media platforms, and also the university learning management system shared space for viewing. And this is to help to stim uh, stimulate discussion and also to do peer review. So in year 2011, uh, Kearney actually proposes uh, propose a pedagogical framework for digital storytelling. So let's take a look at um, this uh, pedagogical framework that is proposed by Shock and Kearney in 2004. It's actually a framework for learner-generated digital video projects. And stage one is actually a development of ideas defining film purpose, target audience, film genre, and context. And also, uh, so mainly is actually doing uh, research of content. And stage two is storyboarding uh, and scripting. Stage three is actually re-storyboarding and reiterating. And stage four is actually preparation for filming. And stage five is the filming itself. And stage six uh, would be post-production, that's uh, editing. And stage seven will be a small group viewing and to actually reflect and discuss uh, the content uh, within the group. And stage number eight is actually, uh, you know, to present the idea uh, to the class. And stage nine uh, is actually dissemination and publication of the content. So the workflow is very similar to learners generated uh, VR360 content. However, I would like to highlight that storyboarding and filming in VR360 dimension is different from the usual uh, video environment. The nature of VR360 means that you will film an environment all around the camera. It means that there can be many things happening around the camera at the same time. And you may not, uh, you may not want to highlight everything and some uh, information or some things that is happening in the environment may be unsightly and we can consider that to be noise. For example, in filming a VR 360 um, scene of a park, there are many things happening at the same time. There are multiple layers in the scene. So we can see someone actually maybe fighting in a park. We can see uh, people cycling. We can see uh, maybe someone um, jog behind me. Okay, so many things are actually um, happening at the same time. It is important to know which story you are telling and what elements, um, for example, the person or object uh, that you are referring to and uh, what are the actions and behavior you want to accentuate in this scene. So what are the benefits so the benefits of uh, having, um, you know, uh, all this, uh, uh, using this kind of uh, assessment uh, format, it actually allows students to gain VR 360 production skills. So it is similar to gaining digital video production skills. Many publications cited uh, uh, that as benefits for assessment. It also allows students to gain storytelling and communication skills. 
This is similar to digital video storytelling. Uh, these are valuable digital uh, skill set that uh, people can use in this new economy um, of what we call the internet economy. VR360 uh, creation can enhance learning, transforming uh, learners from uh, being passive uh, learners to active uh, learners. So uh, it's similar to video production. They have to work as a team, um, you know, to work out storylines and discuss among their teammates. So in this way, they can strengthen their understanding on certain concepts of the of, of the subjects. And the whole process of VR uh, 360 production will deepen the learner's understanding. The learners will also have to factor in many considerations, for example, um, quality of the video, the relevance of the content, the target audience, the level of engagement, and also the ease of viewing and sharing of such uh, VR360 uh, content. And some of these uh, VR360 uh, clips can also be used by faculty for future classes. So what are the uh, challenges? Um, challenges uh, includes uh, student satisfactions may be mixed. Even for normal video uh, creation um, as, as assessment, some students are not happy about it. Some do not like to face the camera uh, when doing a presentation. Some may prefer an essay-based assignment because they do not want to spend extra time doing the project. And some of them do not even like to work as a team. Uh, some students are quite happy with the um, video production uh, because uh, when they have completed it, they consider it as an achievement. Some feel that they have derived better understanding of the subjects. Um, training and clear instructions are essential, especially if students uh, have not done that particular mode of assessment. Other challenges would also include um, uh, equipment. Uh, not many students have access to uh, VR360 cameras. So, uh, so for this um, OEL 302 uh, learning trip to Shanghai and Hangzhou, we have implemented a VR project as one of the course assessment components. 28 students from various uh, programs, uh, such as business, marketing, logistic, ICT, digital media, biomedical, and translation, uh, programs across SUSS have applied for uh, this program and were selected to participate in this uh, program to Hangzhou and Shanghai. They were selected out of more than 120 applicants for this program. Over a period of seven days, the students participated in uh, site visits to AI cloud e-commerce and autonomous vehicle company. They get to attend talks and view showcases in this company. In Hangzhou, we have visited Alibaba, HIK Vision uh, and Dreamtown. In Shanghai, we have visited Chinese companies like Nayo, Meituan Dianping, Tencent and SenseTime. Our OEL focuses on emerging technology, in particular AI and electric autonomous vehicles and also uh, e-commerce and big data seen in China. As part of students' course assignments, they were tasked to work in groups of three or four on several graded um, group-based assessment, in including one to capture and present the entire trip or chosen part or element of the trip as an immersive VR 360 um, presentation. Students were given training on how to make VR 360 videos before their trips. The students shot the VR 360 uh, photos uh, and videos during the period of the, uh, uh, the learning trip. And when they returned back home, they actually complete the post-production process this project was considered truly interdisciplinary because most of the students were not from tech fields and uh, they have also uh, taken this great opportunity to visit some of these renowned tech firms in China. In this GBA, the students are to apply the foundation of VR storytelling to create a virtual reality presentation in the form of either Google expertise or 
a VR360 video. So the theme of the project is to be based on the location and the activities of the trip. And this GBA requires students to demonstrate their understanding and interpretation of what they see and do on the trip. And they translate that into an immersive journey that they can share with their audience at home. They have to keep in mind the elements of immersion, embodiment, and presence. In this GBA, the students have to work in groups of three or four students and with each team member fulfilling key designated film, school, uh, film crew roles to produce a planned VR experience presentation with high production values. So the study hypothesizes uh, that uh, immersive VR production used as summative assessment for experiential learning, such as OEL, would help students to better understand its purpose and learning outcomes. Number two, the students will have a preference for producing VR production over traditional uh, post-trip uh, reports, such as PowerPoint or regular videos. Number three, a post-trip VR production as assessment can increase media literacy skills of university students. Students made a visit to Alibaba's brick and mortar Perma supermarket to obtain first-hand experience for a group-based assessment which uh, uh, requires the students to conduct an experiential uh, study of Alibaba's Perma business model. Perma actually blends online and offline shopping by using various cutting-edge technologies. This innovative business model is reinventing traditional supermarkets and e-commerce businesses. Uh, the use of uh, conveyor belts, robots, and apps were shown in the Hermash store. So we can click on this to see um, the employee in charge of uh, actually picking up the products when a new order comes in. So this is the, actually the starting point of um, you know, uh, delivery where the employees will actually pick up products and place it in a bag and put it on the conveyor belt. So this is actually the delivery uh, system. So the package will actually um, go onto this delivery system and then uh, later on will be delivered to the um, to the customers. So this the, uh, VR 360 uh, clip actually shows the eatery hall of Alma supermarket. And there is a robot restaurant where diners are served uh, fresh fish uh, delivered to the table by small AI powered robots. This is the first time the group of 28 students have embarked on a VR project. We hope that by doing such a project, they can recap what they have learned and seen during the trip and retell the story in a captivating manner. As seen here, the quality of the VR360 videos are not great and the key limiting uh, factor is actually the quality of the VR cameras. These are actually uh, uh, low-cost budget uh, VR360 uh, cameras. Given higher quality VR360 uh, cameras, the resolutions and the effects will be much better. So let's take a look at the uh, students' feedback. Most of the students think that there are too many assignments for this course and the VR360 projects is time consuming. Some students have indicated that taking VR360 shots may not be uh, convenient to be taken at some companies or site that we have visited. Uh, most students have indicated that they have uh, learned how to do a VR 360 uh, production. And also most students feel that uh, they have learned something from this project. So what are the recommendations? To achieve positive outcome for the use of uh, VR 360 creation for assessment, uh, we think it's important to align VR 360 uh, clips or creation with the learning outcome of the course. 
Number two, uh, provide technology uh, training and support for uh, support on the uh, VR 360 camera use, VR 360 uh, filming techniques, and VR 360 post production. And um, importantly, it's good to also provide good VR 360 example clips for students to learn from. And uh, we cannot stress enough that uh, it's important to uh, uh, teach good storytelling uh, skills and techniques uh, uh, to the students to ensure that they uh, capture the key highlights of the subject. And also sharing these uh, uh, clips with the class to stimulate uh, discussion will enhance their learning. For future uh, research, uh, we would like to study how different uh, VR 360 assessment is for individual and group projects. We also would like to study and compare how uh, VR 360 clips uh, can be used for assessment in different subjects and research the academic rigor in each of them. And also, uh, we would like to study if peer feedback is effective for uh, students in VR 360 assessment and how to better facilitate uh, VR 360 assessment uh, evaluation. To conclude, um, earlier on we have uh, hypothesized um, immersive VR production used as summative assessment for experiential learning such as OEL would help the students to better understand uh, its purpose and learning outcomes. So I think uh, we have actually uh, achieved this and this is true. And uh, students have a preference for producing VR production over traditional post-trip uh, reports. Uh, well, um, this may not be true. Some students do not want to spend extra time to do VR production and would prefer a simple trip report. Um, some students, perhaps the students ought to be reminded how this digital skill set VR360 can add value to their CV and is relevant in the context of this new internet economy. Uh, the third hypothesis uh, is true. A uh, post-trip uh, VR production as assessment can increase the media literacy skills of university students. Yes, the group of students are trained to implement uh, the VR360 project and they have successfully uh, completed it. So these are the key references uh, for this uh, presentation. With this, I thank you.